Right guys, Shay here, Uneven Balance, hope you guys are well. So, the Big Bash League is upon us, the 10th edition, um, the 2020-2021 season. I said before, yeah, it's the 10th year of the BBL and the organisers have announced three new rule changes uh, to the format to kind of spice things up. So, I'm just reading now. Uh, the first one is the power surge. So, yeah, the power play was split. Instead of obviously the first six overs being uh, just two fielders outside the circle, uh, it will now be split. So the first four overs will be power play, and the batters will have an option. Uh, I think from over eleven um, to take yeah to take the additional the the basically the other two overs um, at any point between overs eleven to twenty. That's the first rule change. Second one is a bash boost. So it's um. With regards to halfway in innings and where the, each team is up to. So, uh, the Bash Boost is awarded halfway through the second innings. The batting side will receive one extra standings. Receive spot wrong here. And that's actually official on the official uh, Big Bash League Twitter page. Um, one extra standings point if they're above the equivalent 10 over score. If they're lagging behind, the fielding side receive the boost. So, yeah, okay. So, yeah, as they've coined it, the risk equals reward with the introduction of the bash boost. Yeah. Okay, so, yeah, I mean, uh, there's four points available per match, uh, three points for a win, and then one point if you're ahead of the curve, either batting and bowling. Um, so, yeah, you can you can obviously lose and still get a point, um, but we'll get to that in a bit anyway. We'll get to bash boost in a bit. Uh, the third and final change is the X factor. So, halfway through the first innings, both teams can drastically change strategy and choose a sub in the X Factor player. The X Factor can replace any player who has yet to have a major impact on the match, and in brackets, hasn't batted or bowled multiple overs. We'll go back to the beginning, so I'll start with the first rule, and just my quick take on this. So the power surge, I do quite like that actually. Um, the fact that you can obviously pick two, obviously two overs power play, especially because you have a lot of players in middle order you might hold back. So I think like Karen Pollard, you know, um, ABD Villiers, um, Josh Butler, you know, there's, I mean, I'm, I'm thinking recent past with the IPL, uh, but the BBL also see big hitters as well in the middle order. So you might have examples here, you know, a Glenn Maxwell um, or an Ashton Turner, you know, something like that, um, who could bat you know, down the order. <clears throat> And then maybe if they're there, you know, over 15, 16, 17, um, when the you know field is a little bit tired, you know, a bit more tired, um, you know, maybe run ragged for the first 15 over, 16 overs, whatever it is, then you've obviously got you kind of pick them off for two, two overs at the end. The ball's maybe a little bit tired potentially, um, depending who's there. Um, it, I mean, I'll get, I'll get to overall summary of this whole thing, but that's that's obviously the power surge. I quite like the idea, just to kind of. I mean, there's a bit of running theme of what I think about these rule changes, but I do think, I do think these rule changes are good. I think it's, it keeps it fresh and innovative. Um, but anyway, I, I just yeah, I'll get to that in a second. So yeah, I am a fan of the the power surge. I think it's, it's a good way to kind of break things up, and especially at the end because what we're seeing is I've seen T20 cricket nowadays a lot of power hitting at the end. But the reality is you've got five fielders outside the circle, and you've seen obviously a lot of people caught deep. Whereas here, you know, it could be 18 you know, overs, 19 and 20. You've got two fielders out. And then let's say if you're chasing, for example, you need 45 to off the last two overs. But if you've only got two fielders outside the circle, even if you've got seven, eight, nine, you know, batting, you've still got a good chance. So I, I, I quite like that. Um, it keep, keeps the game open until the end, even if you've got still a lot of runs to chase down. In the, la the very last stage of an innings, if you have that, that, uh, second power play available to you, then the power surge, they call it, yeah, then you can, you know, you can still uh, you know, do damage and, and take the game. The bash boost, I'm not really a big fan of, to be honest with you. I just feel like you could be behind the eight ball, you, know, you could be chasing, let's say, 180 um, to win, and the par score is 10 over, 10 over stage, isn't it? Yeah, 10 over stage, it could have been, you know, 86 for two. Uh, and you're 84 for two, you know, um, but then you go and win in 17.5 overs. You've lost the first point. You haven't taken four, you know, four points for a win. Have you taken three points? And the losing team, even though they've been smashed, they, you know, they they, they take on a point. So I'm not really a big fan of that. I think I might get scrapped to be honest with you. I have to see how people play because you're almost playing two matches in one. You especially if you need the points. Because at the beginning, people might not care so much, might be happy with the three points. Um, but
but you might be just thinking, okay, if you need the full four points, you're playing two games, you're playing to the 10 over mark, and then you're playing uh, to obviously 20 overs. So I'm not really a big fan of that, to be honest with you, because I feel like you could lose momentum um, or ball within yourself ball more negatively if you're bowling and trying to get that bonus point. And if you're batting trying to get the bonus point, you could go, you know, all guns blazing and then lose wickets and actually not look at the bigger picture. I think that the teams might look at that and actually render that first point, not meaningless, but don't worry so much about that. Get the three points of the win. And the reality is that over the course of the season, that's what's most important. You'll obviously get team play your know, teams that will get the four four points still. They'll win at a counter, or they'll, they'll bowl really well throughout the whole 20 overs, and that'll come naturally. But it'd be interesting to see if captain and coaches set up to get that bonus point. Like I said, I think it'll become more prevalent in the latter half of the season where teams are languishing the bottom half of the table. They will obviously want to um, get that bonus point, you know? So, so yeah, um, I, I think it'll be interesting to see how that pans out. So at the beginning, I don't think people really care, but I think the second half, teams are languishing will be pushing for all four points for win because they'll need to get into the obviously into the um to last stage of the of the tournament and you know progress through to the final so yeah um okay and the 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 last rule they've got is the x factor which i really like actually i like the x factor i mean they've had um, a similar a rule in the past haven't they um with the substitute you could bring in but the x factor you know if i really actually um well, they described it halfway through the first innings both teams can drastically change strategy and choose a sub in x factor player the x factor can replace any player who's yet to have a major impact on the match hasn't batted or bowled multiple overs so they that hasn't batted at all um what was it with the it was with the power surge wasn't it? yeah power surge oh sorry it was with it was just regarding the um um, yes, yeah, that's a player. So yeah, it hasn't batted up multiple overs, so you can bat it one over, and then you can be sucked out. A bit harsher, isn't it? If you're batting, it's when you you kind of in for one over, and then you're sucked out. I thought it was just actually regarding bowling that you can bowl one over and then sucked out again. A bit harsh. Judge a player on one over. Um, yeah, I mean it's interesting, isn't it, that to, to bring in expert to play? I, I say I quite like that because you might have a player who's not at full tilt. He might be at like 70%, 80%, but he's a really good player that you've got on the bench that you decide to rest. But let's say it's halfway through the first thing, so like, you know, first 10 overs, um, it's not going so well for you. You know, so let's say you're batting um, and you're 61 for four, um, you know, and you're batting, obviously you're batting, you're trying to get these in total. That's obviously not, obviously not a good start, but then you want to bring in, you might have, you know, a top player who's not feeling that well, but then you might have to bring him in. But the options are there, you see. I just think that impact um, might be quite fun to have around, actually. That the fact, you know, you might have, because you get, you get that, you get good players who are arrested sometimes, niggles, or maybe a little bit, maybe possibly a little bit out of form. Um, but I think, like, having that option there to bring them in. Same with the bowling. If a bowler gets tonked, you know, for 23 off the first over, well, I'll just ship him out, innit? Just take him out. And bringing a bowler in, you know, in exchange. Um, it, uh, what this does, this does really very much so is um, it, it lose that whole finality to a game because once you see a team sheet, you can generally set up against you know the opponents. Here you can't. You'll know they have a twelfth and thirteenth man um, that you can bring in. Um, one, obviously, one of them. And you'll have an idea of that, okay, well, they've got these two guys on the sidelines, one of them coming to the side, but you don't know who's going to come in, if they're going to come in, who's going to come out. Do you know what I mean? So it just keeps it fresh and interesting. I know Shane Watts has come out uh, quite a, quite vocal against these rulings, but saying that it's not if it's not broke, don't fix it. You know what? Cricket needs to constantly evolve because this is all about viewership. It's bombs on seats when, obviously, the grounds open up again, and it's, got as, it's about getting as many eyeballs on that screen as possible tablet mobile tv whatever the hell it is it's about you know getting as many eyeballs on the screen this will keep it interesting irrespective of what shane watson thinks t20 cricket has been around now for 17 years it is getting to a point now because there's so much there's obviously a gluttony of of t20 cricket around the world you know everyone you know bpl and the bbl and the ipl and the t20 blast 
um, and the LPLs coming out now and the PSL and the CPL you know there's there's so much T20 cricket now being played it is becoming a little monotonous you kind of even though it's only a three hour game I get that but it's still it's still three hours and that's minimum these games go on you know with stoppages etc injuries and things you know delays timeouts you can go for three and a quarter hours you get the, then it's super overs it's over three and a half hours that's not like it's a game of football. A game of football is done in an hour and three quarters, including the half time. It's said maybe an hour and 50, 55, but it's still somewhat short, three, three and a quarter, three and a half hours, isn't it? So you want to keep it fresh. You want to keep it interesting because if not, it will just get more and more stale. Um, and I think this is, it's not, there's no harm in trying this. There's no harm in trying this out to retain people interest. I, th- I, I do believe the power surge in particular will keep people's interest during the course of the game. Uh, Shane Watson, I think, mentioned the game is getting, we're getting overly complicated. Well, maybe you like it simple, mate, but this is I don't think it's that complicated, but it keeps people's interest going for the entire 20 overs, which is what the BBL have tried to do here, as opposed to maybe just the game petering out. Because we know first six overs, you go for it, you try and get 60, 70, 80 on the board. Well, I mean, 80 at an upper level, but definitely 60 on the board in the power play. And then you kind of, the spinner comes on after six overs because obviously the field's been spread and then they'll start to bowl. And then you may get the quick that comes back in the middle overs and then you get your death balls at the end. But this way, you don't know what's going to, how a game's going to play out. And it will really test the captain and the coach, which is what the game is. Cricket is a very tactical game. You know, it's a, it's not a simple game at all. So whilst T20 is brought in to simplify the game, there still could be some kind of a level of complexity in that format you know um there's still t10 cricket you know there if you want big bash you know big bash bosh wallop crash bang you know cricket that's still there you know um and i, I you might even get a, a reduced format from that i can imagine in the future i have like a t5 level you know t- or some crap you know um i'm sure that's probably around the corner you know we've already had hong kong sixes why not t5 you know um uh, dirty balls go for it you know um my point is, I think, like, there's no reason why T20, T20 cricket cannot become a little bit more um, mentally taxing on the team. It's becoming more enjoyable and fresh for the viewers. Um, I don't see the problem with that at all, to be honest. Just try it and see what works. I don't think, personally, um, regards to what they call the big, the big boost, something, the bash boost. I'm not a big fan of that, as I said before, but I think the power surge. And the X-Facts players are, are good ideas. You know, especially because you've got large squads. You can involve more players each time now. You know? Um, you've got, you, you, what you see in, the, in these in these tournaments is really high-quality players sitting out week after week. We've seen that in the IPL so many times. You know? So, um, this way you, you'll involve in players on uh, you know, a much more uh, frequent basis. And also keeps the players that are in there on the toes because they know all 11 players. You know? Barring maybe the keeper, that the rest of the guys, you know, like keeping your toes, you've got to perform well from the outset because otherwise, there's you know twelfth and thirteenth man waiting there to take your spot if you if you bullshit or bat shit in the first over that you've got, you know. So I'm looking forward to it and seeing how it, how it pans out. I think it's gonna be good. Anyway, that's my thoughts, guys. Let me know your thoughts. What do you think? You think any more rules could have come in to kind of spruce things up? You think you left it alone? Kind of? Are you kind of on the same page as Shane Watson? Uh, let me know your thoughts. Um, and if you like, if you like the comments, or like the content, sorry, do uh, yeah, leave me a like, comment, and subscribe. That'd be great if you could subscribe. I'd, I'd love more subscribers. So yeah, if you could, do, it'd be great. And hopefully, I will see you on the next one. Cheers. <laughs>